But let's take a close look at the GMK tech, Intel inside. Mm, love Intel. But the thing is, do we having a very good deal here? Simply because these are well, those, let's say, cheaper game mini PC boxes. We can actually play games on, we can emulate things on it. But is it any worth like, buying? Because the price quality needs to be right. This is also called the G3 model Windows 11 Pro comes with it. 256 gigabytes of storage and 8 gigabytes of RAM. And that 8 gigabytes? Hmm. Do have some double feeling about that. So let's open it up. Okay, so let's do a quick overview of what we're getting inside the box, but also what we're having when it comes to the specifications. So first of all, the mini PC looks kind of cool. I will love this gray look. It does have an okay feel to it. It's a cheap budget mini PC. At the front, we're going to get ourselves the on-off switch to USB 3.0. I was happy with front USBs. You can see at the side, we're having ventilation and off the same goes for the bottom part. You can also see the fan itself. And at the back, having the HDMI, Another HDMI, RG45, another two USB ports, and the input with a power supply, and even a headphone jack out. Okay, so I must give them extra kudos the way how they package everything up. I have got myself a lot of, let's say, AliExpress mini PCs, and the boxes were very flimsy and very basic, but also come with a different price tag. So let's check out what comes in box number one. So in box number one, we're getting the mounting bracket and a very nice long HDMI cable. This is a high speed doesn't say anything else the dust says that the ethernet inside okay so this is in high speed and then the power supply the power supply is european and when you're ordering these things take consideration you also need to get yourself the right power supply the power supply is just a basic one 12 volt 3.0 amp or amp itself so nothing very fancy over there so it comes even with a warranty card and that's it okay you unfold it no anything else yoohoo no nothing Let's check out what is in here. The tribute to innovation. Ooh, some fancy words. And what does it say? Friendly reminder. The safety warning and precautions. And an overview about the device. I need to connect it. And you can just actually in here already that it does have like even a 16 gigabyte. Oh boy. The device itself comes with the Intel 12th generation Auto Lake N100. That's basically a quad core or a four cores with four threads with a maximum clock of 3.4 gigahertz. The GPU is an Intel UHD and it runs on 750 megahertz, 32 gigabyte RAM support. But unfortunate, we have limited like, storage space in this machine where we can play Doom on a calculator. And yeah, that's a fact. The thing is, this is absolutely cool to see that we're having so many cool performance going on. But I also think the N100 is absolutely great when it comes to, let's say, some indie games. Take consideration, I have put all settings to high. So if you're going to be lowering this, maybe we have a stable 60 FPS with some Street of Rage and other basic indie games. But let's jump into some old school games and you can just actually see that the Outrun 2006 runs perfectly on this N100. It's just crazy if you think about it. We have this tiny PC that can actually run some pretty damn cool games from back in the day without any problem whatsoever.
But let's move on to, let's say, the Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition. And I was really curious what happens if you're going to put all settings on, let's say, low and then going to be playing this on 1080p. And I was surprised to see that the result is surprisingly good. But there was one thing I just needed to do, and the N100 is not really in gaming PC, but I just want to check out with the resolutions, how far we can just push this thing, and what I'm actually going to get with this. And yeah, I was quite surprised to see that we can actually play this game on, let's say, a very low resolution. So let's start off with, let's say, this particular resolution and see what kind of performance we're getting. And yeah, we're having around 25, maybe 30 FPS. But I just want to lower it really low for fun, just to see actually when we're going to be hitting the 50, maybe 60 FPS. So also I want to be messing with the V-Sync and the motion blur on and off, just to see actually what we're getting. And I was quite surprised to see what kind of okay performance we're getting with this N100 mini PC. And when we're going to put this thing on like a super low resolution, I think it was even 800 by 600 for fun, just to check out what we're getting. The overall performance was quite good. So with some emulation, let's start off with some Xbox Classic and native resolution. And the overall performance was not like really great, but we could actually boot up the game and just play it. PlayStation 2 emulation is at the point that we can finally play this on a very cheap mini PC with this particular chip inside. But okay, you don't need to be trying to be even, even like upscaling it, it will not work that great. But we had some great performance, of course depending a little bit of what kind of games you're actually playing. <laughs> And if you wonder, can we actually emulate some PlayStation 3 on this? Um, yeah, I've been trying to load up a certain game, but it is absolutely a pointless like, situation here that it takes like forever even to boot up. So no, there is no PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360 emulation possible on the N100. However, PlayStation 3 was not possible. PlayStation Portable is. We can mess around with the back end with different kind of, let's say, different drivers. Uh, DirectX 3D11 or Vulkan if you want to. But the thing is, three times resolution. Let's load it up and let's see how the overall performance is. <laughs> GameCube is now possible to play on this particular tiny mini PC, but we only having native resolution. Upscaling is absolutely out of the question, but it's kind of cool to actually see that we can finally play some GameCube on these things. <laughs>
And also a quick test of the Wii game Sonic Colors with the native resolution. And yep, we do have an overall okay performance where it does dip down to sometimes even 24 FPS, but it stabilizes very quickly. Nevertheless, we do have an overall okay performance when it comes to Wii. And of course, depending what kind of a game you're in the end going to be playing. Okay, for the test I wanted to also check out is on Sega Dreamcast and with 1289-60 resolution it was the one I got with the best overall 60fps stable performance. All the other ones I tried, even Full HD, I didn't get like a good overall performance there with a lot of dips to the point that I found those games not really enjoyable anymore. <laughs> But okay, so if you're just checking out what kind of game can you actually play on this, there is a lot of great performance with emulation. Of course, the old school stuff will run just fine, 8-bit, 16-bit stuff, but it also can play this nowadays on cheaper game boxes. And that's the reason I will mainly want to focus with the Windows platform, what can we do when it comes to GameCube and all the other stuff. Later on, we'll do some more testing with certain games in combination with some old school stuff. So stay tuned, subscribe, and hit that little bell. So for a budget mini PC, I'm quite surprised the way how this thing looks, but also when it comes to the overall emulation performance and gaming. Of course, this thing is not like really dedicated to gaming, but you can actually play some things on this. And the, let's say the cheaper mini PCs with, let's say, basic overall, let's say, specs are getting way better now. That's quite interesting, but this is really worth picking up. That is something you need to decide. Thank you all for watching. Consider subscribing and it would be great to see you in the next video.